so let me g compact connected simply connected the group g is the algebra the real the algebra and g c is g tensor c then we know that and we also fixed a maximal torus in g and its lie algebra is denoted recording in progress t its lie algebra and we had tc is the complex equation t tensor c and this contains the real lie algebra h denote which is same thing as i times t <coughs> we had uh, then we also had the following notation i mean the definite notation i mean xt is the character group of t <coughs> and this can be has a identification oh compact connector i forgot to say simply connected oh, no since semi simple t has an identification as a lattice in h so we also introduced a lexicographic order given by brick basis on the dual h star and denoted by delta plus the set of all positive roots we also denoted by pi the simple roots pi is a set of alpha in delta plus alpha not equal to beta plus gamma for any beta gamma in delta plus that's the definite simple root we also saw that every positive root is of the form sigma alpha in pi a beta alpha with a beta alpha in z in in fact yeah non negative integers and therefore and we also know that delta minus is nothing but minus alpha alpha in delta plus so every element of delta minus will be again the transition in combination a beta alpha less than or equal to 0 integers less than or equal to 0 all this we went through last time <coughs> now we have also seen the following fact if alpha beta are in delta 
and then g alpha the bracket of g alpha and g beta oh recall that g alpha set of vectors v in the linear algebra which, which transform under the <coughs> torus according to the character g alpha is defined like this. So, if alpha beta and delta the bracket of g alpha and g beta equals 0 if alpha plus beta is not a root equal is in g alpha plus beta if alpha plus beta is in delta Oh, if alpha plus beta not in delta and alpha plus beta not equal to 0. Under these conditions, so g alpha g beta and <coughs> finally, and a third possibility is that alpha plus beta is 0. If alpha plus beta is 0, G alpha G beta is contained in T C. <coughs> in fact, we have E alpha uh, in yeah, we have seen the dimension G alpha equal to 1, <coughs> and if you take E alpha not equal to 0 in G alpha are chosen such that E alpha E minus alpha the inner product with respect to the killing form equal to 1 then E alpha E minus alpha the bracket equals h alpha in h where then uh, and the inner product of h alpha and h with respect to b g of h alpha h is alpha of h. <coughs> All this was proved last time or maybe earlier these are this is all this background information we have. One consequence is that observe that n plus let me write n plus to be equal to sigma g alpha alpha greater than delta alpha greater than greater than 0 and let me write n minus to be equal to sigma it is a direct sum less than 0. Then evidently G c is n minus direction h direction n plus as a vector space G c is this. Now <coughs> and this obvious if we have seen that uh, yeah we have seen that E minus alpha, alpha in delta so is a basis correct my T plus alpha in alpha in delta plus E alpha alpha in delta plus is the basis of N plus. The same thing with minus alpha in delta plus is the basis of N minus and h alpha alpha in pi is a basis of h. It is a basis in fact over r of h is a, is a basis of T c in fact it is a basis of 
H over R. All these are complex sector spaces. The mean, I mean n, n minus n plus or this I should say should write Tc not Tc. All these are complex sector spaces and so when I say it is a basis I mean over complex numbers E alpha forms a basis with alpha and delta plus forms a basis of this the alpha and delta minus alpha and delta plus is a basis of this and H alpha alpha ranging over simple roots is a basis of H. We have seen that the H alpha alpha and pi form a <coughs> basis for H over R. <coughs> so all this background I am just recalling once now I have to erase that it is going to disappear from the board. So <coughs> okay. now I am now going to introduce an associated algebra called the enveloping algebra of the real algebra. This can be done over arbitrary field, but I will confine myself always assume that I am going to oh, see, but what I am going to say will work over any field whatever, any field of <coughs> actually yeah, any field it, it works. So, so if G is a Lie algebra, and then you can form the we can form the tensor algebra or the vector space G. I'm, for the present, I am ignoring the Lie algebra structure. I just looked at looked at tensor. Algebra. What is this algebra? This is nothing but the algebra, the base field C plus second tensor power of G direct sum third tensor power of G and so on. So it is a direct sum of tensor n, n fold tensor product of G with itself n going from 0 to infinity. <coughs> this is uh, a prior vector space it can be made into algebra in an obvious way namely the multiplication is defined as follows you take you, know, you have one tensor a a p this is in tensor p times b1 tensor b2 tensor BQ is just got by juxtaposition of the two. Namely, you just that is a A1 tensor A2 etc. AP tensor B1 tensor B2 etc. tensor BQ. That is a definition of multiplication. Of course, it requires some checking that it really defines a map of tensor P tensor tensor P tensor t tensor P G tensor with tensor Q G to tensor P plus Q G. I am you know I am doing it only for so called decomposable tensors. If you take linear combination you have to see how it works it, it does give you a map like this. What you do is this take an element of this and an element of this and then you have the map you the element of this is in this tensor product in that tensor product if you tensor of this if you tensor the two you get tensor p plus q you get a map and you have to check that this is the map at the level of decomposable tensors <coughs> anyway it's an associate this makes it into which i will also call this t of g tensor algebra of g which is uh, <coughs> Tg is an associate, is a, is a graded associative algebra. And graded algebra means you have a decomposition of that parameterized by 
integers, your decomposition is a direct sum parameters by non negative integers and you find the different graded components if you take the pth graded component, the qth graded component, the, the multiplication of the elements in one, the elements in the other falls into the p plus qth graded component, it is an obvious definition ok. So, graded associative algebra <coughs> with tensor p g as the pth graded component. So, consider in the two sided ideal in T g generated by x tensor y minus y tensor x minus bracket x y <coughs> as x and y vary in g which is identified with the first graded component T1 and G. x y and g is in T1 g this is element in T2 is also an element in T2G, this element is in T1G. It is not a homogeneous element, it does not belong to one graded component, but you, you can form such elements inside the tensor algebra and take the ideal generated by this. this is an element of the tensor algebra. This is in tensor 2G and so is this, this of course is in tensor 1G which is G. Consider two sided ideal, let me call it IG. It is here the G algebra structure has a role to play. We are forming the bracket of XY. And what you find is, yeah, the enveloping algebra of G is the associative algebra. T g denoted u of g is the quotient u g b u g by i g that is called the enveloping algebra of u g. The reason for introducing this is the following. Suppose you have, suppose, yeah, but before that, notice that you have a natural mapping of G. <coughs> well, yeah, into, oh, sorry, this is TG by G. You have a natural mapping of G is included as G equal to T1G or tensor 1G included in L algebra T g and therefore, you can go from this to u g by the natural map pi. You have a composite map like this which I will call I sub g. And now, it is from the definition of the enveloping algebra, it is be obvious that Ig of bracket xy is Ig of x into Ig of y, the multiplication of the tensor algebra minus Ig y Ig x. If you like, the asso any associated algebra can be made into a Lie algebra by the operation the bracket defined by taking a pair of elements x y take it into x times y minus y times x. 
that makes it into Lie de Bras is easily seen. And what we are saying is that this mapping of G into UG is a Lie algebra homomorphism. When, when the associate algebra is equipped with this obvious Lie algebra structure, this becomes a Lie algebra homomorphism. So, IG is a Lie algebra morphism. of G in U G with its natural Lie algebra structure. The reason why we use this, uh, the reason why we introduce another Lie algebra is because of the following fact which is easy to prove. If right uh, <coughs> F G let A be in a in associative algebra then if f from g to a is a Lie algebra morphism A equipped with its natural Lie algebra structure, then there, oh, there exists. Morphism F tilde from UG into A of associative algebras such that F tilde composed with IG equals f. So, you have g here and you have i g which takes it into <coughs> u g and if you have morphism f of the Lie algebra g into the Lie algebra a then there is a mapping here which makes the diagram competitive. So, any Lie algebra homomorphism here can be lifted to an associate algebra home of from UG. All this goes on to say, so this is the proposition <coughs> that is the diagram is commutative. <coughs> what is the upshot of this? It just tells you that when you take a representation of a Lie algebra, on some vector space, that vector space becomes a module over this associated algebra UG. So, what have and conversely, because if you have UG module homomorphism, if you have an UG module, that means you have mapping of UG into the endomorphisms of that module as a abelian group as a vector space, if you like. In this case, you have everything is over complex numbers I am taking. So, you get a mapping into the endomorphisms of vector space, which means you get endomorphisms of vector space is an associative algebra and from UG to that you have a map and then you can compose with the inclusion IG to get the Lie algebra homomorphism G into the endomorphisms of the world. So, what this proposition does is to set up a bijective correspondence between modules over UG and representations of Lie algebra 
over not necessarily finite dimensional no our ultimate interest may be finite dimensional spaces but this formulation is over the representation need not be on a finite dimensional space yeah so there in the right panel uh, sorry UG, UG of course is an associated algebra and therefore can be made into a linear algebra. In fact, uh, the inclusion IG is a linear algebra homomorphism for the uh, linear algebra structure on UG got from its associated algebra structure. So, a corollary proposition is the following there is a bijective correspondence between modules over the ring AG, UG over the algebra UG and representations of G on vector spaces. See representation means mapping of G to endomorphisms of a vector space V. That is what it means. The, endo, the bracket operation here is a Lie algebra homomorphism, but the bracket operation being x y minus y x product. So, we are in a situation like this you have a mapping of G into this, and therefore it factors through so if I have a mapping rho here, you get if you put ig here you get a rho tilde here. So, that makes this into a module, it makes V into U G module. So, it is an immediate corollary of that and this is essentially an exercise. What happens is this, you have a mapping of G into A, or I should say here there is just a unique morphism. So, G into A you have a map which so ob will obviously extend to the ten tensor algebra of G, you have a map F here and you have an inclusion of G as the first tensor power <coughs> if you have a mapping like this you can define F star like F star of A1 tensor, tensor AP you define it as simply F A one, F A two, try F A P. That gives a mapping of the tensor algebra into A, home of the tensor algebra into A. And then you have to check that F star on the ideal IG is zero. If that happens, then it factors through T G by I G and you get a map. And that is easy to check. What you have to check F star of a 1 tensor A 2 plus minus A 2 tensor A 1 minus bracket A 1 A 2. This you have to say is 0. That is clear because it, this goes into F A 1 F A 2 minus F A 2 F A 1 minus F of bracket A 1 A 2. F star of this is precisely this and clearly <coughs> A1 tensor A2 minus A2 is in the ideal and this is 0 by definition if we are assuming that F is a real algebra homomorphism this is a equipped real algebra structure and that is nothing but FA1 FA2 minus FA2 FA. So, it, all this goes on to show that this is true. Okay. And now, next statement is the following. We have a an increasing filtration of UG by vector subspaces. UPG
as follows upg by definition is the image of the sum of tensor qg q equal to 0 to p in qg under the Tatchell map under Tg it is obvious that you have u0 g is the base field contained in u1 g in general you get up g contained in up plus 1 g when you say filtration this is what I mean your success each of this UPG is contained in the next one UP plus 1G and so on it is an increasing filtration. And the point is that <coughs> if X is in UPG and y is nu q g then x y so nu p plus q is a trivial exercise you take something essentially you have to check same thing in the tensor product you have to check if something in this with q equal to 0 to p and so something in the corresponding thing going from 0 to q and then you form a product of an element here and the element there then it falls into t p plus in the sum of t q, t q g with q from going from 0 to p plus q. So, I leave this as a Now, I can now form because of this we can form we can define the associated graded algebra which I will call E0 u g of u g with respect to this filtration. E not u g is going to be graded algebra, what are its graded components? Maybe I should put this you not know, on top. What is this? It is a graded algebra, so I have to define the various graded components. You know, P of U G is by definition U P G by U P minus 1 of G. U, up minus 1 is contained in upg so i can form the quotient here of course when p equals 0 set u minus 1 g to be 0 so for so it starts off with e, e 0 uh, sorry e 0 0 will be the numbers and E 1 0 is the image of G in 
u on g by g. Okay, so and then you have higher elements and the point is the multiplication is defined as follows. If alpha in E p g, E p 0 g, u g and beta is in E p 0, u q 0 g, u g, then how do I define alpha beta? Alpha beta is defined as follows. Let alpha tilde respectively beta tilde be an element in u p g respectively u q g such that which maps to alpha respectively beta under the natural map u p g Then alpha times beta is image of alpha times beta, oh sorry, alpha tilde times beta tilde, which is in u p plus q of g in E p plus q. 0 g. I simply take the product in, inside the enveloping algebra, but u p into u q goes into u p plus q. So, the product will go into u p plus q at the p plus q and I take the image in the associated graded in the, in the quotient space which is the p plus q graded component. So, that is the definition of the product. So, it is easy to see it's, uh, what you get is a graded algebra. This is a, after all I am taking the, the pith, I have defined the pith graded component as this and I am taking the direct sum and in that I am defining the algebra structure, the multiplication. The only thing that was missing is the multiplication structure which I have now defined. <coughs> okay, now. So, in the same way we can define uh, associated algebra for any if you have a filtration with the property that the pth stage and the qth stage multiplied going to the p plus qth stage, then you can do it. There is nothing special about the enveloping algebra. If you have a filtered algebra with the right, with the right property, pth stage and qth stage multiplied goes into p plus q, then you can do the whole thing. Okay. Now, <coughs> you see, we are interested in studying representations of the same simple the algebra, which is the same thing as modules over the enveloping algebra. That is why we are going to study the modules of the enveloping algebra in greater detail. Our goal is to study representations, but the two things are the same. So, of Lie algebra, but I, therefore I can simply look at modules or UG. <coughs> so, I need to understand the structure of UG a little better for that purpose. And next lemma, which is easy, is the following. E not u g is commutative.
to see this first observe that E not 1 of u g generates all of E not u g. How do you get elements of <coughs> E not u g? You have to take elements in the various u p's and then take their images and form the product that is how we do it. But the enveloping algebra itself is generated by g. So, every element of u p g is a product of elements of coming from g and in u p g is true in u p in u q g it is true. So, in the quotients the corresponding thing is the element gets written as a product and here it becomes the in q u q also gets written as a product and so the product is going to be in, in there. Any take any element in u what let me put it like this take any element in u p g any element in u p g is a product of elements coming from g and scalars. So, it becomes a product of those elements and take its image. So, if we look for the images if I look at element x 1 x 2 x p its image is x 1 bar x p bar product is the part of x 1 bar x p bar where x i comes from appropriate thing either the 0 stage or come from the real algebra g. Because of that you find that this is statement is easy to see it is generated by this. <coughs> so, if you want a strict proof you do it by induction if you like you prove that the image of u p g in the associated grid take the sum of the u p g u p g is pure p less to that the image is already generated. So, the image is generated the every element in the image is written as a product of elements from g like that and then you go to the next stage by induction if you like it is a proof you can make a formal proof by induction. Prove by induction that any element of E not P U G is a product of P elements in E not one. formal proof is by induction. <coughs> okay, now, so once this observation is made suffices to show that for x y in g you take the images their images in u 1 0 g commute. e 1 0 u g commute, but that is more or less the definition you take extensor y and the, the product is given by in, inside u g it is given by extensor y going to the product of x and y and y tensor x going to the product of y and x and the difference is bracket x y which is in the, the note, notice the image of x tensor y and y tensor x are both in second graded component. It is a second graded component and whereas, we take the difference is bracket x y which is in the first graded component. So, model the first graded component becomes 0 x into y minus y into x become 0 modulo the first graded component that is. <coughs> so, what, what one has to show is the following if you let me denote by phi i the mapping from u by q by p u p g into E naught P of U G. Let me call it pi P. Then what we are looking at is 
the by definition if you look at x in e not 1 u g x y are here x tilde y tilde will be in can be lifted to elements in t 1 g elements in u 1 g which by definition is i g of g we done that. <coughs> and then what is the product? The product x y is pi 2 of uh, x tilde y tilde <coughs> and product y x is pi 2 of y tilde x tilde and so the difference x y minus y x which is what we would like to prove is 0 x y and y x are here this generates everything so it is enough to prove this commute so x y minus y x is going to be pi 2 of x tilde y tilde minus y tilde x tilde which because of the structure of the envelope the way the algebra is defined it is nothing but the bracket of x tilde y tilde sorry x tilde yeah pi 2 of x tilde y tilde but this remember is in u 1 g which is the kernel of pi 2. So, it is this bracket falls into the linear algebra which is in the first stage of the filtration and pi 2 is 0 in the first stage of the filtration pi p is 0 and u p minus 1. So, that does the job. So, it is a competent algebra and here is a theorem which is known as usually referred to as the poincare birkhoff witt theorem says the following e not u g the inclusion the map g to u 1 g e 0 1 u g this composite map is injective in fact it is an isomorphism I mean the point is, is, is we already know it is subjective from u 1 g because u 1 g consists of g and lower filtration and g maps on to that. So, the composite map is we know it is a subjection the point is it is also an injection it is an isomorphism. Moreover and the, the, let me call this map uh, j g. the map of the symmetric algebra S yes, G of G in E 0 U G induced by J G is an isomorphism. See, so you have this mapping G, which I call J G, that goes into this girded algebra E naught one U G, which goes into 
is 0 of ug. You have a mapping of this vector space into a complete algebra. Such a map extends by the definition of symmetric algebra. And the claim is that this is an isomorphism. Here there is an inclusion of G in SG, the symmetric algebra of G. <coughs> Notice that the symmetric algebra is a special case of universal symmetric algebra where the bracket operation is 0. If the bracket operation is 0, you will recover the symmetric algebra because what is the, you are passing to the question by x tensor y minus y tensor x, the ideal, ideal generated by that, that is precisely symmetric algebra. And over a field, we know that symmetric algebra is same thing as the polynomial algebra in n variables where n is the dimension of g. So, what we are saying is that this associated graded algebra is an algebra which we are familiar with, namely it is a polynomial algebra in as many variables as the dimension of g. So, theorem says implies that E naught ug is isomorphic to polynomial algebra over d variables where d is dimension of g or c. Huh? Yeah. That is uh, actually G uh, plus. Yeah, it, um, this. What I'm saying here, from here to here, the mapping is an isomorphism. Yeah, that is G going to C direction G and then going to G. G goes into this here. U and G can be identified with C plus G. And then U one not. And then U, this is U not. U one. The by definition you. The, when you how do what is this? This is nothing but u1 modulo u0, and this is u0. Yeah, so that isomorphism is trivial. Which one? Asking that JG. JG is it's not it's not difficult. But you need it first to conclude the final theorem that it's a symmetric algebra over G. If you want to prove that, you have to first prove that the inclusion is injective. It's quite easy for, just from follows from the definition of the ideal. See the point is if you look at G, the ideal, any element of the ideal is going to be a choose ideal, but I am going to x tensor y minus y tensor x plus my minus bracket xy are the elements and you, the general element is got by multiplying both on the left and right. When you do that, <coughs> it never you will never land in G itself. See if so the point is this to prove this injective, what you have to do is to you have G and then you have going into tensor algebra what I call it TG right. G goes into tensor algebra and then from here you have natural mapping to UG and this is the mapping which you called IG you want to prove it is injective. So, what do you have to prove? I have to prove that the G intersection IG Is 0. If I prove that, then the mapping is injective. Okay. And how do I prove that? It is Tg, you can write down a basis for Tg, consists of elements of form xi1 tensor xi2 tensor xip, where i1, i2, ip are all less than or equal to dimension of G. So, you look at you fix an ordered basis and then any basis of the transfer arc is like this. And then when you look at the ideal generated by that, you can see easily see the ideal generated by that could mean what? You have to get some say xk tensor xl minus xl tensor xk minus bracket xl xk. 
and then you are going to multiply on the right and similar thing on the left. So, and you take the span of that, that will be the ideal generated by the, that will be Ig. And if you do that, you are always going to get something here and something here, you will never get an element which is purely one of the, you will never get the element of the Lie algebra itself when you do this. Once again, the, if you want a formal proof, you have to do it by induction. It is in fact that is the proof I, I do not think I want to say more about that. You just look at look at this take a basis for the tensor algebra which is any p triple like this and p varies any p triple I all that you want is i1 i2 must lie between 1 and d. Take such elements and allow take an element in the generating element in the ideal and on both sides you multiply by elements of this kind such a thing cannot result in a purely XK can XL element that is what I want to say. <coughs> so once you prove its injective to prove the Poincare width theorem itself which is the, this is the second part so to speak there is a nice trick which is involved which is the following. You have the Lie algebra G and you can embed it diagonally in G cross G. This is made into Lie algebra by making these two commute, these two factors commute, and in each the bracket operation is the bracket operation in G. So this is direct product of of G with itself. So the bracket operation if you like A B comma C D will be equal to A B, A B is here so A C <coughs> plus B D. We are essentially assuming that elements a and B commute, C and D commute. That's the direct part. You have this direct mapping. So this is a Lie algebra homomorphism. Now look at the map for G going to G cross G, and then on to another being algebra of G cross G. And it's a simple calculation shows that this is nothing but U G tensor U G or K. <coughs> Where in the, in the tensor order if an element alpha here and element beta here what, what I have to alpha here and beta here and then I want to multiply this by gamma tensor delta this will be simply you treat alpha and beta as commuting with each other and so also gamma and delta. So you are going to get alpha tensor gamma, so sorry alpha, alpha gamma tensor beta delta. Essentially you slip gamma over beta go to the other side because I am going to assume the two commute. So that is how the tensor product is defined. So you have a natural mapping of G into this G to G cross G is the real zero homomorphism and G cross G to UG tensor UG you know respects the, bra the bracket here goes into the bracket here in the associative algebra. Therefore by the universal property so let us call this mapping diagonal mapping D or delta let me call it D. So and this composite map may be the composite map itself I will call D. By the universal property in Yuga, you have a mapping G, D goes into UG tensor UG, some associate to algebra taking the bracket operation to bracket operation. So we know that there is a mapping from UG into this D tilde. And 
and for x in g b of x is easily seen to be here x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x because it goes into xx in g cross g it goes into xx and in the when I take the ug tensor ug the uh, which is the thing here it goes into x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x it is trivial checking. <coughs> so we will make use of this uh, d here d tilde here. To prove that the algebra is commutative, I mean it is a symmetric algebra, it is enough to prove the following. Fix a basis ordered basis x1, x2, xd of g. And let us look at the let me I will also write for i g of x 1 x i I will simply write x i. I know as i g is injective so I will simply write i g x i as x i. I will identify g as a sub subset of u g <coughs> then and set for a multi index alpha n stands for non negative integers in, include 0. So, for alpha set x alpha to be equal to x 1 power alpha 1, x 2 power alpha 2, x d power alpha d. Okay. In that order at this point you know in, in the multiplication u g we do not know it is it is it is not competitive in general because x y minus y x can be bracket x y. So, it is not uh, which may not be 0. So, x 1 uh, I found it, I call x alpha this suffices to show that x alpha alpha in N D are linearly independent. It is enough to show that clearly. And for this, so what we do is uh, we will show inductively that the set x alpha find an mod alpha which by definitions alpha 1 plus alpha 2 etc alpha d <coughs> is less than or equal to some number q <coughs> this set when I add up the things get this which is less than to q this is that the set is linearly independent. Over <coughs> that will show the entire for each q, I want to say that that set is linearly independent. So, as I let q grow larger and larger, I get the complete set of elements x power alpha. Now, to do this, we will make use of the map which we call d, d tilde. D tilde was a map of ug to ug tensor ug. Now, we will say I claim the following d tilde of upg 
is contained in sigma u r g tensor u s g r process <coughs> equal to this model is obvious just have to see what it does if you look at we have seen that T of x d tilde of x is x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x. So, if you look at d tilde x uh, <coughs> take yeah you just see d tilde of x1 x2 x p is what you say it will be product x1 tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x1 times x2 tensor 1 plus 1 tensor sorry in you are writing yeah x tensor yeah that is right x tensor 1 plus 1 x2 tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x2 etcetera x p tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x p multiply it out you find it falls into this when you multiply it out you have some number of factors here and some number of factors here but the total number of factors is p when you you, are, you can combine <coughs> when you can combine this with this with this and so on or combine this with something the next one you know you can jumble up so all that you find is you get x let me put it x1 here maybe I take 1 tensor x2 here so I will get x1 tensor x2 <coughs> and then with third factor yeah you, you, you do this x1 tensor x2 is what you are going to get x1 tensor x2 say when you combine the xp tensor 1 you can look at it may be x1 xp tensor x2 and so on it is clear it falls into this. Once again if you want a formal proof do it by induction d tilde of u p g falls into this. Once you do that get this implies d tilde induces a homomorphism algebra homomorphism d bar from <coughs> the E naught of U G into E naught of U G tensor you get a homomorphism D bar such that D bar x for x g I have identified already g with the subspace of g equals x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x you get a mapping d bar like this. Now we are ready to use induction to prove this statement. So what happens here <coughs> for x and g this is a statement. So if I take so, assume that x plus alpha mod alpha less than or equal to mod alpha is same as sigma alpha i onto d less than or equal to q are linearly independent. And then I want to say that if you go to q plus 1, they are going to be linearly independent again still even if you make it into q plus 1. Why is this? These are linearly independent. Suppose, assume that suppose x alpha mod alpha less than to q plus 1 are not linearly independent. Uh, 
suppose they are not linearly independent. Then what happens? Apply our home morphism d bar. So first of all, suppose they are not linearly independent, then get have a linear relation <coughs> sigma a alpha <coughs> x alpha equal to 0 alpha with mod alpha less than equal to q plus 1 and mod alpha equal to q plus 1 for at least for some alpha. That is, suppose this such a linear relation. We want to prove they are linearly independent, but if they are, if not, this is what happens. Apply d to this. <coughs> Sigma a alpha <coughs> so yeah. What is this A alpha? It is going to be a delta of x alpha is what? Is x1 tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x1 power alpha 1 times x2 tensor 1 plus 1 tensor 2 x2 power alpha 2. <coughs> etcetera yeah uh, in fact I can assume that this uh, you know if they are not linearly dependent we, we know they are in different graded components each mod alpha equal to q is in the qth graded component mod alpha equal to q plus one is a higher graded component so I can actually have a relation like this mod alpha equal to q plus one if they are not linear dependent you are going to get relations like this with a alpha not equal to 0 for some alpha with mod alpha. In fact oh, you can have such a relation with a alpha not equal to 0 for every alpha figuring here for, okay. for some alpha. That's all. Mod alpha is always equal to q plus. You must have equal to zero at some point. So when I write it out, a alpha x alpha equal zero. A alpha looks like this, and then finally x uh, x x d tensor one plus one tensor x d power <coughs> alpha d. <coughs> So, if this is 0, you are going to get all this equal to 0. Okay, but this implies, notice that <coughs> um, when you expand it, all this out, these are, which are the elements which are exactly, I am looking for elements which are in, uh, you know, by induction hypothesis, we know that xi tensor x i power uh, oh, when you expand this you get terms like the a alpha x 1 power alpha 1 tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x 1 power alpha 1. See what I want to say is the following if, if you if, see you are you're going to get terms like this sigma some coefficient c and then I am going to get I am not saying it right you are going to get yeah you are going to get something like x1 power alpha 1 x2 power alpha 2 a alpha times x, x d power alpha d you will get terms like this and then plus sigma uh, tensor 1 
plus sigma a alpha 1 tensor x1 power alpha 1 etcetera xd power alpha d and then you will get other terms which will not be few terms here and here no <coughs> there will be terms mixed terms here you will always get xi tensor x eta where psi mod psi mod eta are both greater than 0 you cannot have 0 and some c psi eta and the c psi eta are not going to be 0 because what is involved are going to be binom binomial coefficients it is easy to see that with you will get some relationship with c psi eta not 0. But this term is we have assumed that a alpha x alpha is 0. So, this term is 0, so is this term, these two terms are 0. So, you get a linear relation among x i tensor x eta with mod psi mod eta greater than 0 and therefore, also mod psi mod eta less than q, less than or equal to q. These are terms which correspond to degree q plus 1, but you get lower order terms here. But we know the x i are linearly independent when mod psi is less than, less than or equal to q and so are the x eta. So, this tensor product is also going in the tensor product space they are also linearly independent get a contradiction because you have 0 here. This is gone, this is gone so you get a linear relation among x i tensor x eta with mod psi mod eta both less than d less than or equal to q, q which is a contradiction because we have assumed by induction process that they are linearly independent. So, this proves the poincare birkhoff with theorem. I think there has been a fairly heavy dose of algebra <laughs> today and maybe I will stop here uh, because the next stage I want to apply all this to the case of enveloping algebra. And Why that term, term is 0, the first term? No, see a alpha x alpha is 0. Therefore, a alpha this is x alpha tensor 1, a alpha x alpha tensor 1 and here also a alpha x alpha is 0, so tensor 1 is 0 and so is this 1 tensor, both of them are 0, so you find <coughs> okay. So, that does the job. So, <coughs> Any questions? So, in fact, uh, all the notation I talked about in the beginning has not been used. <laughs> Only I just recalled the various things, but then the pure, the pure algebra thing, I am not uh, using any of that notation. I, I will use them next time. Maybe next time I will not repeat the notation. Every time if I repeat notation, that it takes, takes 15 minutes <laughs> to repeat the notation. This is one of the, it is always a bit of a problem with uh, Lie groups. Notation has to be, in a lecture you have to keep recalling and then that takes, there is a whole two pages of notation which you have to recall every time. So, see 0 is this that is equal to this and I expanded it. I get all the, these two terms as 0 and then I get a linear combination of this you have to conclude that some c, c psi eta is not 0 and that is because some a alpha is not 0 because of that you find that some c, c psi eta is not going to be 0. So, you find that this is equal to 0, but by the induction hypothesis mod alpha less than to q are linearly independent. Here what do you have? I have I I taken some part uh, linearly independent uh, have vector space, tensor all vector space. I have taken a bunch of linearly independent vectors x i and another bunch of linearly independent x c time in, in, in both vector spaces. So, if I have tensor product of two vector spaces, then I know that if I have a basis for one and the basis for the other, the tensor product of the various basis elements will give you a basis for this. So, if you have linearly independent set of elements and another linearly independent set of elements for the other vector space, 
tensor products of each of these linear independent moments, the other one will give you a linear independent set. But this has become 0, which gives a linear relation, which contradicts the linear independence of the earlier things. You, you have to do it a little carefully because binomial coefficients are involved. But you know, all the binomial coefficients which you, you find that when you, of course it, it combines with the alpha, but still you have to prove that at least one by such coefficient for x i eta is not 0. Yeah, that comes out if you use the binomial coefficients yeah. properly. So finally we get the basis for E naught of u g. So you find that in, in E naught of u g the x alpha are all linearly independent and that will prove it is a symmetric algebra. Uh, 